Good morning. It is 5.11 a.m. I've had two cups of coffee. Two cups, yeah, but a lot of coffee. Strong. And I am ready to boogie. Boogie with math, my favorite kind of boogie. Today, we're going to take the rules of exponents, something you learned one or two semesters ago, hopefully, and we're going to update them. We're going to update them to rational exponents. So in case you don't know what I'm talking about, we're talking about that other rule of exponents, the one that we wait to talk about. Here it is. The nth root of x raised to the mth power can also be written as x raised to the m over n power. This, let me put it in a different color, this is called a rational exponent. Remember in math, the word rational pertains to fractions. They come in very handy, as you're going to learn. They let us do a lot more with radicals. So, for instance, the square root Let's say the square root of seven. And remember that square roots have an invisible index of two. And this seven, just seven, is raised to the one power. That can also be written as seven to the one half power. All numbers that are raised to the one half power are really square roots. How about the cube root? The cube root of five squared. That can also be written as five to the two thirds. We're going to apply the rules of exponents to problems like this. We're going to do it right now. Here's the first problem in your homework. Let's see if I, well, I'll just write it larger. So here's number one in your homework, which is applying the rules of exponents to rash, uh, the rules of exponents to rational exponents. Four, that's the base raised to the three quarters power times four raised to the seven eighths power. Remember when you have like bases, you add the exponents. This will be four to the three fourths plus Seven eighths. Now we have to calculate that. You can do that by hand. I'm debating whether I should. All right. Now two times three is six. Two times four is eight. That's six eighths plus seven eighths. That's write the denominator once now that they're the same. Add the numerators because it's an addition problem and that will be 13 over eight. 
So the answer is four to the 13 eighths power. Now, a lot of you are just not comfortable doing that. So there are plenty of calculators that will do it for you. Like the T, excuse me, like the TI, which is what I use. 4 raised, well, let's get this bigger. There we go. 4 raised to the 3 fourths plus 7 eighths, 3 divided by 4 plus 7 divided by 8. Math frac. Ah, no, that's not the way I want to do it. Too much coffee. 3 divided by 4 plus 7 divided by 8. Math frac is 13 eighths. Right there. So you can do this with your calculator also. Don't include the base. Yeah, that's the best idea. Do not include the base, just add the fraction part because that's what you're interested in. Let's do some more. Ah, problem number two. 10 raised to the 5 6 power divided by 10 raised to the 3 6 power. That's the way it's written. That's really one half, but then we would have to change it. But we don't even have to put that in the calculator, do we? Or maybe we do. Let's wait and see. When you have like bases and you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. So this is going to be the base raised to the 5 sixths minus 3 sixths power. 5 sixths minus 3 sixths. The bases, I mean, the uh, denominators are already the same. So we'll have five minus three up here, which is two, but two sixths is not the answer. You still have to reduce. Now you can do this pretty easily. If you can see that two will go into two and two will go into six, if you want to do this by hand, you divide the numerator and denominator by two. You always have to divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number, okay? Two divided by two is one, and six divided by two is three. And if you have trouble with that, I recommend doing this on the calculator. Five, six, minus three sixths. Math frac. Gives you one third. You can't see that. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, poo. There you go. One third. So that's how I'll do this. Ew, that looks horrible. What do they want us to do? Use the laws of exponents to simplify the following. Simplify your answer, use positive exponents only. Okay, we're not expected to come up with an answer. Thank goodness. 
you'll see what I mean when I get this written down in a larger fashion. Here's the problem. This looks really horrible, enough to make you go running away. 3.7 is the base to the negative 120th power over 3.7 to the negative 1 fourth power. We can use these properties of adding exponents or subtracting exponents, multiplying or dividing like bases. The bases are the same. If they were different, we couldn't do this adding or subtracting trick. Now, I'm not going to let that intimidate me. I'm going to use the rules as they are. This is going to equal 3.7 to the negative 1 20th minus negative 1 4th. Okay? Pulling up the calculator. Right there. OK, clear. Negative 1 divided by 20. Minus. Negative 1 divided by 4. Now I think that's right. Yes, negative 1 20th minus negative 1 4th. Um, if you hit enter, that's not the end of the world. But just going to math, frac, enter, cuts out a step. Look at our answer. That's not bad at all. That's one fifth. Equals 3.7 to the one fifth power. Now, when you have a base raised to a power, raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. Ten. The base is 10, 10 to the 7 fourths, raised to the 2 fifths, is 10 to the 7 fourths times 2 fifths. We don't even need a calculator for that. 10. When you multiply fractions, first you look and see, hmm, what can I cross multiply? But you don't have to. All right, I know that can complicate things. Now, if you want to do that, let me put a little box here, because that's where I'm going to put my exponent, but I have to do some calculating. If you want to do this by hand, 7 over 4 times 2 over 5. I know that 2 will go into 4. So let's divide 2 and 4 by 2. This is called cross canceling. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 4 is 2. So that this is 7 over 2 times 1 over 5, and now I multiply the numerators together and the denominators together, and I get 7 tenths. That's a 7. Go away, Melania. For goodness sake, I'm so tired of this coming up all the time. I have to do something to move it. 
I have to. It's going to drive me crazy. Well, 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 let's go back to the issue at hand. What if you want to use MathFrac or whatever passes for MathFrac on your calculator? Well, if you're using the TI like I am, when you multiply fractions, you do have to use parentheses. so that the calculator knows exactly what you mean. Calculators are not as bright as they seem, okay? Ah. Now what I'm looking for, ah, there. What I'm looking for is this little guy. There it is, okay. I am going to, what am I going to do now? Seven fourths times two fifths. I'm going to write it here, then I'm going to put up the larger screen. So parentheses, seven divided by four, parentheses closed, parentheses open, two divided by five, Parentheses closed. All right, now let me call it up. No, wrong. There, there's what I've got. Now I'm going to click on the math button and frag and enter. And there's the answer in lowest terms or simplified. Either, either term is used. There is another way for those of you who are into using the calculator, and that is, let's see, is it alpha y equals? Yes, it is. If I click there, that is if I click on one right here, enter, I can write fractions like this. Some of you have that, some of you don't. Which is why I don't use it a lot. Seven, down arrow, four, right arrow, times, alpha, y equals, enter, two, down, five, right arrow, Math frac, math frac, enter. Same answer. I find this very time consuming. It's so much faster just to do this. But if you want to be fancy, do this. If you have it. If you don't, don't worry about it. I don't use it. Okay, onward. So, oh yeah, so the, <laughs> we've calculated the exponent. The answer is 10 raised to the 7 tenths power. Don't write it as a decimal. The instructions, what do the instructions say? Simplify your answer, type exponential notation with rational exponents. Okay, it doesn't say, does it? Maybe, just maybe, you could get away with 10 to the 0.7 power, only because seven over 10 exactly equals 0.7 but I would not get into that habit. Eventually it'll work against you. Okay. Well, there's another one. All right. Five, 
a to the 11 thirds times a to the 5 sixths. The bases are the same, so I add the exponents. That's a to the 11 thirds plus 5 sixths. I don't need uh, parentheses for this. Don't need them. So let's get the calculator. Eleven thirds plus five six, and then I'll pull up the screen. Eleven divided by three plus five divided by six. Right there. Enter. Oh, I hit enter. You see what happens? OK, it's not the end of the world. I can math frack from here. Math, frack, enter. Nine over two. Equals A to the nine over two. So as long as you remember these rules, you can just buzz right through this particular review. There. Clicked on the wrong one. All right, let's see. Ah, ah, they are getting a little more difficult. Okay, we can do this thing. Six. Aha, this is a kind of a trick problem. A to the two thirds times B to the nine eighths. The bases are not the same. These are unlike. bases. A and B, they're different. So inside the parentheses, I can't use one letter and then add the exponents. Too bad for me. But here's what I can do. Because these are multiplied, I can do the following. A to the two thirds times four times B to the nine eighths times four. Now you can do these by hand. Four is four over one. All you have to do here because you're not going to be cross canceling, is two times four is eight, three times one is three. So you'll have A to the eight thirds times B. Ah, but you can cross cancel here. Four goes into eight evenly. So four goes into four one time, four goes into eight, two times, then you say nine times one, that's nine, and two times one is two. So we'll have nine over two, and that's as simplified as you can get. But, but, You can use your calculator if you need to. I'm going to say two thirds times four. Okay, technically, yeah, I, I'm just gonna do it. Two divided by three in parentheses times four. Okay, math frac.
math frag enter it's eight thirds and the other one is nine eighths times four parentheses nine divided by eight parentheses closed times four <laughs> i did it again okay math frac enter nine over two The trick here, remember, is if the bases are different, you cannot go any further. You will not be adding the exponents, period. Not in this problem. And by the way, for those of you who know the calculator well, in this problem, I did not really, really need I cleared it. I did not really, really need to use parentheses because of order of operations, but a lot of you don't remember order of operations. So use the parentheses all the time when you multiply or divide fractions, then there won't be a problem. Okay. Ah. See, they're not all boring. Here's the problem here. X to the two thirds power raised again to the negative three sevenths power. That's going to be the base X raised to the two thirds power times negative three sevenths. Well, the threes cancel, so you'll have negative two sevenths, but we cannot leave the answer that way. Why? Because nice people don't do that. Also, the answer would be wrong. The instructions say use only positive rational exponents. So we have to do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is multiply two thirds times negative three sevenths first by hand, two thirds times negative three sevenths. The threes cancel, but I'm going to do some cross canceling. Three goes into three one time, three goes into three one time. That's going to give me two over one times negative one over seven, two times negative one is negative two, and one times seven is seven. So our answer should be X to the negative two sevenths, but I'm not done. When I have a negative exponent, that means my base is in the wrong location. There are two possible locations, up or down. Our X wants to go down here. So I'll have one over X to the positive two sevenths. This is the right answer. Let me put a box around it. Okay. Now back here, wasn't there another negative power? I didn't leave. Ah, both of these were negative, but we have a positive power in the end. So I didn't leave any any final exponents in the final answer. I didn't leave any that were negative. That's important because it's wrong. Now, for those of you doing this on the calculator, you would multiply two thirds in parentheses. 
Well, you would use parentheses to multiply two thirds times negative three sevenths. What you have to do, ooh, what you have to do is remember when you multiply fractions, you've got to use parentheses if you're using the TI. Okay. Now, here's a problem. At, oop, 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 oop. X to the 11 tenths power over Y, different base to the one fifth power. All of this raised to the negative five elevenths power. You're going to have to actually do some cogitating here. As painful as that can be. All right, we're going to do a little trick here x to the 11 tenths over y to the 1 fifth. I'm going to rewrite negative 5 elevenths as negative 1 times positive 5 elevenths because they're equivalent, but I need the negative sign. Now, I am going to use the negative one power first. Just x to the 11 tenths over y to the 1 fifth, raised to the negative one power. This is what a negative one power does to a fraction. Watch carefully. Y to the one fifth over X to the 11 tenths. That's what the negative one power does. It flips the fraction when the fraction has parentheses around the whole thing so that that negative one acts on the entire fraction. Now I have five elevenths. Okay, now, y to the one-fifth times five-elevenths over x to the eleven-tenths times five, ooh, elevenths. Here are my fractions. One fifth times five elevenths. You can cross cancel the fives. Five into five is one. Five into five is one. One times one is one. And one times 11 is 11. So why? is 1 over 11. Well, y raised to the 1 over 11. Here, writing them larger, my powers are 11 over 10 times 5 over 11. I'm going to be able to do a double cross cancel. 5 goes into 10 and 11 and 11 cancel. Okay, five into five is one, five into 10 is two. 11 into 11 is one, 
11 into 11 is one. My answer here is one times one is one over two times one is two. So we're going to have X to the one half power. Now, because Y and X are different bases, that's as far as I can go. That was a super problem to a math teacher because you have to use your brain and then you can always use your calculator if you have to on these. All right, we've gone on for some time now, but I kind of think you still might need a little help. So, let's just continue. Nine. We're going to have m to the negative one third times n to the negative seven sixths. And I should thank my math lab for their wonderful problems. Okay, now, let's go full page here. This will be M to the negative one third, raised to the negative 18, sevenths times n to the negative seven sixths times negative 18 sevenths. Oops, well, skipped ahead a little bit, didn't I? All right, there. Now, when a base is raised to a power, raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. m to the negative one third times negative 18 sevenths, okay, times n, different base, to the negative seven sixths times negative 18 sevenths. Now let's write these larger down here. Negative one third times negative 18 sevenths. Negative times negative is positive. Three will go into 18 evenly. <clears throat> so three goes into three one time. Three goes into 18 six times. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 7 is 7. That equals 6 sevenths, which will give me m to the 6 sevenths power, positive. Now let's work on negative 7, 6 times negative 18 sevenths. Negative seven six times negative eighteen sevenths equals negative times negative is positive. Six, well, look at the sevenths. We can cross cancel those easily. Seven goes into seven one time, seven goes into seven one time. Six goes into six one time. 6 goes into 18 three times. 1 times 3 is 3. Over 1 times 1 is 1. So this is just 3. So over here, n is raised to the third power. 
also positive. So this is my answer. You had to memorize these rules for integers back in beginning algebra. It's time to memorize them again. Perfect use for flashcards. Well, come on, there. All right, how many of these do we have? I don't actually know. Ah, oh, that's it. We're done. Woo! Okay. I will get this video up as quickly as I can and get it to you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.